So apparently speed running's the thing, so here we go. <laughs> Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the latest edition of Tales from Mother Space. Mara takes a bit of related stories from around the internet and read them out for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below, and please don't forget to do the usual YouTube gumph. Because if you don't, the nano swarms will steal your other sock. But more importantly, as always, I hope that you enjoy. Blamo! Personal best. I just want to give a quick thanks to the tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Story Double One Meeting of the Minds, written by Aspire again. The Gact Sentinel stalked the human that had foolishly penetrated the frontier planet's security perimeter. Clearly, the distress signal the human craft had sent as it plunged through the atmosphere had been a ruse. Even though the crash landing site looked convincing, nothing should have been able to survive that wreckage. The Sentinel was confident as it flowed forward on its dozens of back legs. With its turbo rifle couched comfortably in its raptorial forelegs, it planned to put the turbo rifle aside once it got within mental range of the human. When it expected to use the great evolutionary advantages it had over other competing species. The Gact remembered with satisfaction the times in which it had bettered the other species at close range. The touch of mind to mind, the pleasure of another creature's thoughts laid out before it, and the gacked advantage of being able to use their opponent's thoughts to anticipate the very next move, even before their opponents themselves knew. Gacked were literally a move ahead of every creature they faced, at least when close enough, and their scientists had made a great progress in using technology to expand the range of the gacked mental touch, from 50 or so meters to the average gacked could influence to several kilometers. And once they could expand the range even further, the Gact knew the space battles that the Gact found so alien with minds too far away to touch would be as easily winnable as the short but pleasant skirmish it now anticipated with the human, nearly in mental range. The Gact slid its turbo rifle into its back brace with one foreleg while the other retrieved a long blade from its scabbard. It flowed carefully towards the human, closing the range. It could feel the tremor of the human mind as it drew close. The human was still looking around, putting on the pose of looking somewhat lost, Gact thought. The Gact halted all of its rear legs in place while it squinted towards the human, and reached out with its mind. And, um, and, uh, the human jerked suddenly, startled. It looked about as if it had heard a call. The Gact blinked, crouching. What its mind had touched was like nothing it had ever sensed. It was almost like an ancient radio static, impenetrable to understanding. The Gak's mandibles clenched as it reached out one more time, with full concentration, staring at the human. And... And... It all came in a rush. Not just what the human was thinking, but everything it didn't realize it was thinking... Holy cow, what in the hell is that again? There's something really weird. It feels like I'm being watched. Like in that one old movie, Grandpa liked. What was that again? The one with the atomic hillbillies that surrounded that family out in the desert. Or something. And who was it in that? That was a guy from the Road Warrior. Oh, no. Was it Weird Science? Yeah. The one with the Grandpa with the Rex Harrison hat. I, I wonder why they cast Rex Harrison in My Fair Lady when he couldn't sing. And I think Audrey Hepburn couldn't sink either, so they dubbed her. And dubbed Dana was in a lot of westerns wearing that bowler hat like Mr. Miyuxapal from Superman. And I wish that he was here now because I'm in a hell of a fix. And I hope my ankle isn't sprained. When Uncle Kumar got his ankle sprained, they couldn't fix it with an argon therapy. So they had to do it the old-fashioned way and brace him and have him ice it. And jeez, is it getting colder? Would it freeze here tonight because the damn blankets are in the back of the craft? And even if I can't get to them, that's a hell of a walk back to with my ankle hurting. And oh boy, they must have some painkillers in that bed kit, because Jesus put Allah, cry me, what the hell is that? The Gact dazedly realized that the human was staring right at it. The Gact tried to focus, but the absolute chaos of the human mind it had touched left it stupefied and slow. It desperately tried to rush towards the human to attack, but found itself frozen. The blade slipped from its foreleg as the Gact suddenly found itself deep in a memory of the human 
in something called middle school. And it looks like a huge praying mantis I remember back in Mrs. Kylie's class when we had the mantis in the aquarium and Mary Beth said it looked like an alien. And I said, no, alien would look like that. Boy, was I wrong. That thing is giving me the woodies. And Mary Beth, I wonder what happened to her after high school. And I remember Jimmy telling me that she liked me, but not liked like me, but that was the desk that she was in. I think it was up two up and one over. I remember one of those hot days now, how she would wear that summer dresses, and, and, I wish I had asked her out in the eighth grade dance, and I wonder why she didn't like me like me. Was it because I was too short, or did I not like the corny jokes? God, what an idiot I was. Ah, that's the life I hope to see her again in class reunion. Is that a freaking rifle on the space mantis's back? Hey, what's wrong with it? Okay, hang on, Mr. or Mrs. Mantis. Jeez, I hope it's not slimy. Far from the gact being able to anticipate the human's move in combat, it had slumped, dazed, and somewhat mortified, as the human subconscious, with all of its id and unknown motivations and every bad and good memory all twisted together, washed over it. The gact blinked. No other creature was like this. Motivation should be clear. Memory should be simple. But this human monstrosity of a mind was just obscene. The gact tried to close down its mental touch to preserve its sanity, but the human was already approaching it with a look of concern. With every step, the human presence grew in the gact's mind, and it knew that it could not stand to be too close or it would be overwhelmed. What was a whelm, anyway, and why would you be overwhelmed or underwhelmed? But no one is just whelmed. Does that mean everything in Sympatico and Italians make great wine? I wish I had some now because I could use a drink and... Uh... The human was returned to its people as a token of diplomatic appreciation after it had carried the comatose gacked sentinel to its base. The sentinel later recovered after steadily application of mental therapy and heavy doses of drugs to produce targeted amnesiac state. The Gact and human spheres of influence maintained relatively peaceful relations after their first encounter. But the humans never did get over the rather aloof and highly formal manner of the Gact during the rare meetings between the two species. It was like the Gact just didn't want to connect. End of story. Story number two. Hitchhiker's Guide to Humans. Written Damaged Dice DM. Every alien knows about the guide to the universe. It's been around since any could remember, with only minor revisions, corrections, and updates in its long history. It was seen as a galactic baseline of what you're likely to encounter out when there's a void that is space, and up till very recently was considered a standalone source that would get you by. That all changed once the humans arrived, and a second guide was published specifically for dealing with human interactions quickly overtaking the original in sales in only a few cycles of being published, and only the Omnigod knows how many pirate downloads of it have occurred before it was designated as public safety document and distributed freely. It was a slim book in its physical form with tabs that would allow you to quickly find the relevant sections, mainly because if you were dealing with a human you generally had little time to spare. The broad subject tabs were greetings, business deals, biological, religions, romance slash sexual encounters, combat. Flipping through, you would see such advice as category, greetings, humans insist on shaking hands with greeting. If you don't have hands, offer them whatever you can that is vaguely hand, tentacle, or pincer shaped. It is not worth offending them. Note, see biological for more information. Or my personal favorite, category, religion, Humans are superstitious species, especially human engineers. If you see a small yellow piece of paper on any piece of equipment, regardless of what it says, back away out of the room slowly and quietly as possible. Also, do not answer if you have seen there are 10 millimeters socket, even if you think you have. It'll not be where you think it is. There are various gaps in the knowledge of even this guide under romance listed. Under the turn-ons and offs, there is literally no information available. Apparently, humans have a saying about uh, trying anything once, which is frightening considering the variety of biology in play in the galactic realm. Speaking of biology, this is by far the largest section of the guide, with many of the other sections pointing here to clarify or expand or reiterate points 
made in the rest of the guide. It is well known that Earth is a class 18 death world, and as such, humans have developed as apex predators in an apex predator world every sense and statistic you know about the best of the best no longer applies. The humans have been given the title, the best in the universe, to various things since before they had spaceflight. Funny thing is that they were almost universally right in claiming that title. See historical document Guinness Book of World Records. I assure you, we checked. It's non-fiction. That leads us to the last category, combat. Normally, with any other race, this section would contain known tactics, interesting tidbits about weapon systems and countermeasures, along with general size of standing forces. This section, when turned to, only has two words printed in large font. You're screwed. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.